without intentionally planning it. We now have an animal rescue program here on our 16-acre farm. It's our mantra about free living. It's that you don't have to suffer. We get to live very comfortably, dare I say luxuriously maybe, but we do it totally cheap. Don't look for why you can't do this kind of lifestyle, try to research why you can. Hey guys. We're Finn and John and this is our little raisin. Come check it out. So one of the most fascinating things, in my opinion about our tiny house here is Finn's design of our outdoor kitchen. For over 10 years our kitchen was inside the cabin area here. In fact, these double doors here were a solid wall until we tore them down completely. It had one little window and Finn never liked it. It was very dark in there all the time. What started out as a traditional Thai outdoor kitchen from Finn's home country Thailand. But Finn had to put his flavor into it. It had to be all glass. So, since I grew up and spent a lot of time in South Florida with hurricanes and storms, Finn's experience with monsoons and typhoons and things like that in Thailand had to be rock solid. Especially here in central Georgia we get a lot of windstorms and tornadoes. So, we started with the roof. We used these clear polycarbonate panels. The company is called Poor. these are also approved by Miami-Dade County for, you know, their hurricanes and all that. We also did the roof a little bit different. Everything has specs to use a CU for these types of roofs and such and we went with 2 per CU to beef things up a little bit more. Finn and I live in a small space and we never wanted to compromise on kitchen space. Some people ask, why do we have this big, long 7-foot commercial sink? Our answer is, why isn't it cool? It's a 3-basin sink. It's really deep, it even has that commercial sprayer that works. And the beauty of it is that now you can't even notice it, uh, it's full of dirty dishes. We just hide everything in there when people go out like today and we can hide things. So, it works really well. Finn's designs for everything. She likes everything eclectic. She likes everything unique. This chandelier here is an acrylic chandelier. I think she bought it online on Facebook Marketplace for like $70. She buys everything really cheap. And why not have an acrylic chandelier in your kitchen? There's no rule that says you can't do it. And if there was a rule Finn and I would say, too bad, how sad, I'm going to do it anyway. The first two pieces of furniture that Finn and I built together are a big antique 12-ton, 400-pound picnic table that's near the fire pit. But also this red table here. We built this 12 and a half, 13 years ago when we were starting out uh it was a work table, it was a tool bench. It became my desk, it served as a kitchen table when the kitchen was inside. Now here it's just counter space. So it works, it's really versatile, it's on wheels, we can move it around. So this is really practical. It's multi-purpose. These counters that you see here usually when you find them have a little backing. They were all rotted out and destroyed. These things are probably 100 years old, 80 years old or whatever we got them for, I think, 25 apiece. They're great for storage, they're really deep and give us more counter space. You'll also notice that we have a lot of open shelving around here instead of closed cabinets. We don't like to lock ourselves into high cabinets. Fun fact, this little cabinet here. When we were first in Thailand, at our parents' house, they would put the food in these little cabinets like prepared food and so on, but in the refrigerator because the food was consumed quickly. And that's exactly what we do with this cabinet. We put a lot of food in here and it's another way to store things without filling up the fridge. So that's why we have such a small fridge and the little fridge doesn't draw a lot of power from our solar. We're completely off the grid here and that includes our water. We get all of our electricity from our solar system and we get all of our water from rainwater collection. The water is actually filtered in a lot of ways. We have like a five-step filter and then for our drinking water. Even the water that comes out of the faucet has gone through all of those filtering and purifying processes. Then from the faucet we put the water into our two filters, Berkey, and that's what we use for drinking and that's what we use for cooking. And then what's really cool is this old Windsor stove. This was a blessing in disguise. It came from an old hunting camp. 
It used to be a natural gas stove that we converted to propane. It's totally old school, but it works really well. We have a biogas pit and what we do is we treat our wastewater. Our wastewater processing is done through one of these biogas digesters. And to answer question number one, no, our burgers don't smell or taste like poop, it's biogas. It's methane gas. The methane that we create with our biogas system is completely odor free. That's why it's always important to have a gas detector. If you have a biogas system and you're using the stove inside your house, we use it outside so we don't have to worry about that. When I met Finn, Finn was living in London and I was living in Miami. We met through a dating site. Two years into dating Finn proposed to me and I enthusiastically said yes. She had some terms and conditions and the main ones were that we pick a country because for those first two years of dating we were going back and forth between London, Miami, London, Miami, let's pick a country, settle down and have this international, because we were burning money left and right and we built our own house together. And that's how we got into this. Our kitchen used to be totally in this area here. We knocked down this whole wall and then what we did then was open up this whole space. So it really made this a lot more spacious, it makes our house look a lot bigger than it is and made it a lot more comfortable. We went through a whole process, a whole collection of different seating areas here. And finally we landed on this one and it turns out really well, it's really comfortable and it works really well and it puts us really close to our wood stove which I think is called a West Dutch wood stove. It's a high efficiency catalytic converter wood stove. Why does it have a catalytic converter in there? It takes the smoke and the partially unburned wood particles and recycles them back into the stove and burns them as fuel. This way the smoke emission coming out of the chimney is minimal compared to a standard wood stove and we don't consume as much wood. In fact, Finn got me a proper desk, which makes me feel a little more legitimate, like I used to in the business world. But the really cool thing is the lockers. We got them from a JC Penney distribution center, when JC Penney was closing all their stores and everything. I think we paid $80 for all of them. We can store a lot of stuff in there. Our mantra about free living is you don't have to suffer. Sometimes I get the feeling that people think living in an out-of-the-way place means living in a tent in the middle of a mud field and it really isn't. At least not for us we can live very comfortably, dare I say luxuriously maybe, but we do it totally cheap. But again, we're looking at over 12 and a half years of work. This is where we sleep. This bed used to be what I call a sectional. We had two RV-sized twin bed mattresses and it made an L-shape here and our bedroom was upstairs. Then when we moved the bedroom downstairs we just disconnected this side that we built and then brought our mattress from upstairs up here. And that's how we made it. And it's a full, super comfortable side bed. We have a storage room down here. And then here under the mattress there's a 3 foot by 3 foot trap door that you pull the mattress out of and you can pull the trap door out and access the storage. Here I think the best advice we can give people from our experience is to believe in yourself and do what you want. We get a lot of comments online saying, I can't do that because, and they say their reason. Our point is that it's really very easy to think of reasons why we can't do something, but don't go looking for why you can't lead this kind of lifestyle. Try to research why you can do it right now we're in our bathroom, the conservatory bathroom, the oh my god bathroom. And the reason I say the bathroom, oh my gosh, is not because of the public response, it's because when Finn first suggested doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, are you crazy? 
I didn't see. Are you talking about me? Oh, geez, where are you coming from? My gosh. Quote, that's why. Finn has always wanted a greenhouse bathroom. We didn't have any printed plans, we didn't have any designs. I basically said, we're going to build this out of 2x4s, we're going to frame this up and we just started building. People ask us a lot of questions, how do you clean the house? Same as a regular house. We just use PVC pipe, schedule 40 pipe and we just glue it all together with PVC approved glue and that's it. The gray water from the kitchen sink and the gray water from the bathtub goes into the garden beds. We use non-detergent Castile soaps so the soaps don't have any negative impact on the plants. We're stationary here on our farm so we really like our home biogas biotoilet and I mentioned that. When we were talking in the kitchen about our biogas digger, so we dump right into our biogas digger, but we're upgrading our system so we're upgrading right now. So we disconnected the bio toilet and right now we're using one of our three, nature's head. What we like about the nature's head is there's no plumbing required and we empty the contents of the nature's head into our human composting system back here. Look it up and read it before you start judging. The liquid, the urine that goes into the canteen. We dilute it 5050 with our rainwater and use it in our gardens or pour it directly in between the soil, between our chicken coops and the tree line and it's a great predator deterrent. It keeps raccoons, possums and the fin and I realized very early in our relationship that we both have a mutual love for furry, feathery, slender, scaly creatures on four and two legs. So without intentionally planning it, we now have an animal rescue program here on our 16-acre farm. We are also a no-kill farm. We have a lot of livestock here, but every single one of them is here to live the best life possible. Forever homes and the animals and livestock that are rehomed are not sold by us and are given away to new forever homes. Girls. You know, we say we rescue animals, in fact, these animals rescue us. So if you want to check us out online, you can find us at MF Cabin, but you can really find most of our content and our largest account at United Tiny House. Thanks for watching our video, that's going to be donkey, that's going to be.